Let's talk about the uh, census. Um, over the past couple of years, I've spent some time with a good friend of mine building um, what we call ILGIS, E-A-L-G-I-S, um, a sort of open source mapping tool to let almost anyone with any skill level um, explore and analyze the data from the um, census, which is a, a large um, data set maintained by the ABS. I'll be covering sort of two parts of this story today. We'll sort of start out with why we built it, some of the challenges for the average person in trying to use census data. Um, and some of our ideas for knocking down some of those barriers. Um, and then we'll sort of talk a bit about um, how we built it, how we use post and vector tiles and how they're amazing, essentially. So the census, I think, really is like the ultimate open data set we have. It's this ginormous longitudinal data set that covers 94 point something percent of the population. Um, it's a huge rich resource. It's got 400 different topics in it from how long it takes you to get to work in the morning to whether you live in a house, a flat, or a, or a houseboat. Um, but using it in a spatial context has, has a few challenges. You can use the census in quite a few ways already. You can go and download it. The ABS and other organisations make um, tools and maps and reports available about particular broad themes in the census, about employment or housing and so forth. Um, ABS has Table Builder, which is a really powerful tool, but you need to be a bit of an ABS data nerd to take time to learn and understand and use it properly. Um, so if what you're sort of interested in falls outside those bands of pre-generated report or sort of powerful stats tools, then you quite quickly hit the bar of having to work with raw census data itself um, or getting someone in to do that work for you. And the ABS does a really, really good job of making census available. You can go and grab the whole thing. Um, free CrowdCom's license, easy to access, um, but this is sort of what you get in the download. This is one of the CSVs from the 2016 census. There's 7,000 of those in the nice big zipped up data set. Um, requires a fair bit of skill to go from this to a map if you're not a diary person or a gist person or a mapping person. Um, to even go from like, having a question about data to having a result is five, six, seven, eight steps of data, geocoding, and so forth. So we thought, we can probably tackle these barriers. We're smart, we write code, we know spatial stuff. What if we did a sort of thing like Excel, but for maps in that sense? <coughs> Excel's widely used already. Um, it's relatively simple conceptually to understand and use, but you've got these sort of powerful expressions that anyone that can um, understand and write those to start to combine and transform data um, themselves without having to write code or understand about databases and so forth. We didn't want folks to have to think about like, finding the data, downloading it, extracting it all, finding the right data set, geocoding that data set to LGAs or SA1s and so forth, um, and then finally getting onto a map in some fashion, in some service. Um, we didn't really want them to have to, know, have to know about spatial or projections or GIS or anything like that we know. They just want to see something on a map to try and sort of short circuit that, um, that process. We also kind of wanted to take some gatekeepers out of the system in the same way that Excel can remove the need for a database and a DBA and so forth. Um, access, to, access to the census data and data like this shouldn't necessarily need um, a GIST person or an IT person and so forth. Um, take some of those sort of knocks out of the system. And this is what our sort of work on this Excel for Maps concept looks like so far. Um, that looks all cool. Um, so we've chosen the suburbs data set from the 2016 census, and because this is Melbourne, we'll find some data about Melbourne. So I'm sort of curious to know where folks in the UK have come in Melbourne, where they sort of settled um, around the greater Melbourne area. Um, so we'll look at country of birth by person. So this is a sort of um, segmented data set of where, where were you born um, from the census by age range and so forth. So here we're just sort of grabbing folks from Northern Ireland, and Scotland, and you can see it's just a sort of this plus this type expression, in the same way Excel is A1 plus B1 plus B, B3. And we'll choose Wales. So yeah, quite a simple expression. And we'll see what it looks like on a map, and we'll make some tweaks to the styling to add some more color ranges and turn off the scaling on the data and so forth. And that is our data mapped on Scots, Welsh, and the Northern Irish. Um, there's no need to know about GISs or how do you get the data into a system. Um, 
from here you might want to look at a portion of population or combine it with some other variable from some other table of the census and so forth. Um, and that's all just a sort of Excel style expression away once you've found it. So under the hood, on the technical level, um, this is kind of what we're doing. So we're sort of taking this user's expression of G1570 and G1620, those are sort of the internal census IDs, translating that into um, essentially a whole pile of SQL at the other side um, through taking the, in this case, the suburbs geometry and then passing that expression out to those individual databases and the columns and so forth in there. And then through SQL Alchemy, spitting out a pile of SQL that's like, this joins to this, this connects to this, and bam, that's the entire data set built sort of on the fly for whatever that expression is. Um, we'll talk about how that gets to the map bit um, in a sec. But yeah, for, for us, it'll just is sort of our ideal idea for how do we get some more powerful data analysis tools and data biz tools into the hands of more people using these sort of big data sets like the census, which are kind of still locked down to folks like us that work with data. Um, first and foremost, for us, it's something we built for the community. Um, anyone can use the sort of public community site we've got set up. Um, they can run their own Ilgis. It's all open source and free, obviously. Um, already loaded, loaded with the 2011 and 2016 census. Um, really, it's there to let folks iterate quickly from question to expression to map in that fashion. Um, as well. And we have a couple of happy users as well. Um, Struggling Greens have been helping us sort of beta test it for the past five years since we hacked together a proof of concept. Um, I've got 30 odd users or so around the country now that are planning various campaigning efforts with it from sort of big you know, national level questions right down to my local suburb, my local electorate type things. And for them it's, it's taking the sort of um, the back end messing about the data out of the picture. Their, their IT and special volunteers don't need to get requests for maps from individual um, campaigns or electorates about we'd like to see number of renters or people um, doing at home childcare and so forth. They can set it up for their users and they can just go and get their maps and sort of self serve in that way when they have a question about something. So, in building Ilgis, we had a couple of sort of key points around data transparency and verifiability, we wanted to keep um, in the front of our minds. It's too easy to make a mistake in either choosing the wrong data set or making an assumption that's incorrect about a data set, um, or just trusting that what you see on the viz, what you see on the map, is actually an accurate representation of the data. Uh, so for us, the two key points there. One is this, there's no secret source in how the data gets in there. The data ingest process is published, documented, and it's up on GitHub, openly licensed. You can go and check it, verify it, rerun it, and so forth. Um, and there's no trust us element either. It's, you can go from that map that we saw then, grab that as a CSV file, compare that to the actual raw census data, and make sure that calculations that are done are actually correct. Someone else can verify it for you, and so forth. It's also applicable to any sort of data. It's, we chose census because it was large, useful, and it was there. Um, anything with the concept of location there, electoral data, survey data, and so forth, um, can also be applied to it. So now the kind of the how we bolted all this stuff together. Um, I could talk for far, far longer than the six minutes I have left um, about how we actually got the census usable in a spatial context, um, how we built data loaders for about six months to get CSV into PostGIS, and how we parsed all the um, interesting metadata the ABS has published about the census. Uh, but this is a spatial conference, and I mentioned the vector tile story, so um, let's talk more about vector tiles. Steve kind of gave us a good rundown of pros and cons, what you should use it for when you shouldn't use it. Um, but for those that weren't here, a vector tile essentially uh, is a small little packet of simpl simplified and compressed spatial data and attribute data. But all the styling, the rendering, and the presentation happens in the browser. So unlike WMS, it's not like a pre-computed tile. You just get data and attributes, and then you style that in your, in your web browser or your client. For those that want the full picture, I've got some notes in the, um, in the presentation notes with links to further presentations and sort of in-depth dives into the hows, the what's, the whys of, um, of vector tiles as well. So we looked at vector tiles as, as, as a solution for this census mapping for a couple of reasons. The first was because of data itself. Um, census is ginormous, uh, 400 plus data tables, 57,000 potential variables in there about everything um, around the country, 
So we couldn't really take the usual approaches of pre-generating a bunch of data sets, um, pre-running analysis and so forth. That wasn't going to scale, wasn't going to be practical for us. So vector tiles were kind of a, a nicer uh, option there. And this sort of Excel for maps concept uh, introduced a few more challenges. Users, users can pick any of those 57,000 variables, mash them together in some way, and create a sort of new data set on the fly. So again, we couldn't re sort of pre-compute that analysis, but we still wanted users to be able to sort of go quite qu quickly from expression to map to concept like that, without having to wait around <coughs> for something to run on the back end. Um, you also need to support any level of detail. So from a, a national level summary right down to the, the smallest mesh block of 50 houses somewhere, had to sort of work and be fast as well. And the tech stack had to be simple. So we were sort of running this ourselves out of our own pockets. It's a community tool that we're very keen to keep developing and supporting, but to do that, running costs had to be low for it to be a viable thing um, for us. Hence, Spectre Tiles came to the rescue for us. And let's sort of achieve all of that. Um, this code here, don't try and read it, it's um, quite small. This is all that's required to take that sort of um, SQL query generated by the expression parser and spit out some vector tiles to the, um, to the client for us. It's, um, you can then go and use that in open layers of leaflet and so forth, so it's pretty ag agnostic about the um, environment. And that's all coming straight out of PostGIS. And this is kind of a, it's not the most elegant um, PostGIS functions and so forth, but this, these are the two sort of key functions required to get vector tiles out of PostGIS. There's a um, as MVT, which sort of takes individual rows and transforms them, transforms them into vector tiles, and as MVT geom, which is kind of the, the geometry side of that, taking that and transforming that into the uh, coordinate space of, of vector tiles. There is a, a ton of really good presentations and resources online about how that actually works under the hood. Um, there's some in the, in the um, speaker's notes as well, but just to reiterate, these are all built on the fly from whatever the user has entered as an, as an expression. Um, and they perform insanely well. Most of them are happening in less than half a second for even the most sort of complex expression at SA1 mesh block level. Um, so kudos to the folks that put that into PostGIS. That has been a, a fantastic to see that just sort of on the fly generation of stuff when you have dynamic data sets. Um, so for us, this is great. It's super fast. Um, because we're that close to the data, we can start to do a few more optimizations. So we can, we can still throw out um, geometries that are too small. If you've got a big tile of Sydney, you don't want every single individual mesh block or SA1. You only want ones you can see. Um, and we can still simplify geometries and do other sort of custom optimizations as well. It's super lightweight. The sort of community site right now runs on a $5 a month digital, digital ocean droplet with a single CPU and a gig of RAM. And that's the entire PostGIS, Django, Nginx stack and so forth in there. Um, so for us, this sort of single SQL query replaced, replaced our entire GeoServer instance that we needed for this. Um, for someone that's built lots of map server, GeoServer stacks in the past, that feels slightly scary because that's kind of been the, the big complex spatial bit that sort of served us. But boiling it back down to SQL just kind of feels refreshing and powerful in the same sense that we can do so much with seemingly so little these days for use cases like this. Um, I think, as Steve mentioned, there are some GeoServer plugins for vector tiles as well. So if you have a GeoServer, you can just pop that in and play with that straight away. So, so thanks in closing. Um, without the amazing work of the ABS in running, maintaining, and doing the um, census over the past 100 odd years, none of this would work. Um, and likewise, everyone working on PostGIS and Postgres and SQL Alchemy and Open Layers and so forth. Um, we are really just standing on the shoulders of many, many giants before us that have built this ecosystem of tooling and code and platforms and so forth. So thank you to anyone here that works on those. Very much appreciated. And thank you for your um, time today. So you can check out the public community site at demo.ilgis.org um, and all the repos are on GitHub if you want to take a look there. Um, we would warmly welcome anyone that wants to work on any aspect of this. We're a friendly community of two developers right now. Um, and you can read our code of conduct in the repo as well. Um, for us, it'll just is a sort of work in progress over, over the next couple of years. We're looking at upgrading expressions to include functions and so forth, or the completion, and some general UX improvements on the application. Um, and lastly, a small present for anyone that likes to work with data. Um, you can grab our PostGIS dumps from that link there. So that's the fully spatialized census and has all the 
um, parsed ABS metadata, so you can link individual variables to what they actually mean in reality. Um, that's just sort of JSON queryable rather than the god-awful spreadsheets the ABS publishes. Thank you. Have fun. Uh, excuse me, rather than downloading all the CSV files and building the uh, yeah. Excel expression, yeah. wouldn't it be easier to use SDMX, the SDMX service from ABS? Why did you discard that? Um, for us, it didn't contain everything we needed. Um, right? For us, it didn't, cont it didn't um, contain all the data we needed, so it wasn't the, um, the full census at the time. It was only a cut of the main topics. Um, and we wanted to be able to, to combine those variables on the fly. Um, and do it quite quickly. So yeah, we looked at SDMX and at first and thought, great, an API, and then sort of hit some sort of practical barriers of actually that's not going to work in reality. Um, but we'd love to use, use it a bit more in the future in terms of just pulling the SDMX data set that we haven't got, perhaps, some of the, some of the um, nonsense and stuff. All right, yeah. okay. I was just uh, wondering whether you'd uh, attempted anything with the time series of data from the ABS? Oh, we've got the time series profile in there, yeah. That's from the um, census. Yeah, that's loaded in there, yeah. yeah.